So in 8.2, we're talking about transformations of log functions. Uh, we're talking about the same parameters that we've used for other functions, for exponential and sine and quadratic and anything. Uh, so we have a number in front here, right, A. What does A um, do to the graph generally so f uh, up to this point? Vertical stretch. Yeah, vertical stretch, that's right. And it's the same thing for when we're talking about logs. <laughs> so vertical stretch. If A is greater than 1, it pulls it upwards, right? Kind of from X or whatever. It pulls it up from X and, and down from X axis. If it's between 0 and 1, it compresses it. What happens if it's negative? Which way does it flip? Around the X axis flips this way. That's correct. Okay, B. What does B do again? It's the horizontal stretch. That's right. And so B acts the opposite way. If B is greater than 1, that means it's actually compressed in towards, <coughs> towards the Y axis. Uh, if it's between 0 and 1, it, it stretches out from the X axis. Okay. What about H? H represents a, uh, a shift. Okay. In which direction? Vertical or horizontal? horizontal. Right. This is a horizontal shift. So it moves it left or right. The whole graph stays intact. It doesn't stretch. It just moves it left or right. And K, what, hap what does K do to the graph? It's a vertical stretch. Uh, it's a vertical uh, shift. Or a translation is also, you would hear, that's what it is, a translation. So if you just translate something, you're just moving it. You're not warping it. Okay, so having, having that under control, we understand that this, these are the parameters. And notice that the only difference here from before is we have a log here, right? So it's log. And this is going to be base 10, or it could be another base. It doesn't matter. Log base, whatever. But log base 10 are what we're going to work with. All right, I'm going to give you a series of graphs. And this is, I'm going to outline here a series of transformations, okay? That include either stretches or uh, shifts, transformations. So the first graph, notice that the blue graph is y equals log of x. So that's log base 10 of x. If x is 1, 10 to the power of what gives us 1? That would be 0. So it's 1, 0. Okay? Um, if, if we have um, 10, so if x is 10, so 10 to the power of what would give us 10? That's a y value of 1. Okay? So I this blue is y equals log x. So what's happening here with the red one? Well, what you want to do is you want to take a look. I've already outlined a couple dots here. So we've got a value at 2, and we've got a value, another value at x equals 2. Okay? We've got a value at 10, and we've got another value at 10. So if you take a look at this value, y equals 1 right here, this value is y equals 3. Okay? Um, so this value right here appears to be going up as well. And could it be true that this is a factor of 3? We might look at other values and see if they're a factor of 3. Now, we can't really test all of them just within the scope of what we have as a graph here. But if we look at you know, all these values, you know, from here to here and from here to here, a factor of 3 seems reasonable. So what is, um, if we have x equals 2, so y equals log of 2 base 10. What is y equal there? Can we do that on our calculators? Pretty easily, I think. All right? So log of 2. What's that? Oh, it's 0.3. Okay. So that means that this value right here is about 0 0.3. This value on the red graph looks pretty close to 1. Right? Maybe not exactly 1, but it's pretty close to 1. So 0.3 times 3 would get us pretty close to 1, right? Not exactly, but pretty close. So it's reasonable to think that this might be, and you can see this is a little under 1 technically. So maybe it's 0.9 something. So this has a vertical stretch of 3. And again, you just take a look at some of the points in the graph and see if more than one of them line up. Now someone might say, Mr. Maxwell, that looks to me like it is a, um, it looks like it's a horizontal compression. So someone might say, Mr. Maxwell, I, th I think that this right here, this value has been compressed to this value. See, it was a 10, now it's a 2. So you might say, why is it not this? 
log of one-fifth x. Okay? And that would be a reasonable first guess there. I guess my question would be, are these the same, first of all? And if they are great, if they aren't the same, then should we maybe check some other values to see if this is holding true? Okay? All right, so for example, um, are they the same? No, they're not the same. Okay, they wouldn't be the exact same functions if you were to graph them. And also, if you put values in for x, you should get a little bit different values. So what you might want to do is check, you know, if that was the case, or let's go to 5 here. So 5, on the new graph, this, this straight across here should be exactly 1. Well, it's not 1, is it? It's 1.6 or something. So the 1 fifth x doesn't really hold true for any other point. Okay, so you might want to test different stretches, but they should, uh, so this one is not, not correct because it didn't work for other points. That make sense? Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at the red graph, which we know is y equals 3 log x. And let's see what's happened here. Well, we have some points outlined here. So this is a 10, an x value of 10. This is an x value of 5. So that appears to be a horizontal compression of, oh, actually, this should have been, I think I just uh, realized I made a mistake here. This should be f 5 if it's a compression, not 1 fifth. The factor is 1 fifth. The B value actually would be 5. So if this is a compression of 1 half, the B value would be 2. Okay? So we could, we could take a look at that and say, hey, I have an idea that this is a, um, a compression. Um, so what you want to do is you want to, uh, find some other points to see if that makes sense. Like, let's go with 6. So x equals 6 here. If I go straight across to the other graph, I should have x equals 3. And if you go straight across, it indeed is 3. Okay, so 2 should be straight across, should be 1. And that is indeed true. So you have a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. Okay, and so that means... Um, it's 1 over b should give you 1 half, 1 half. So that's uh, 2. All right? Okay? Now, you might say, well, Mr. Rachel, I think this was a horizontal translation. You say, I think that whole graph just moved this way. It didn't compress, it just moved. The shape stayed the exact same. Y it doesn't appear that that is the case down here. Now, things get a little bit... Uh, tough to guess here. Uh, there might be a case for a vertical translation. Okay, there might be a case for that because it, it appears that possibly you know some of these values are the exact same if you move them up. I guess the trouble comes you know down here. Is this the exact same and is this the exact same? I'm I'm not really sure. That's a bit tricky there, right? Because down here is where we do have a horizontal translation. And I want you to notice, you see, this, this, this transformation is a squish. This one is a move up. So they look almost the same, don't they? Don't these look all, almost the same? Okay. If we were to zoom in and take a careful look, though, and possibly examine some exact points, we would see that, yes, there's the same distance from this graph to this graph in a vertical uh, manner, okay, but this graph here, it uh, it fails that. So from here to there, uh, it appears to be quite a bit shorter than from here to there, a uh, little bit, right? But this one definitely is a better indicator here. See that that distance is the same as the distance up here, which is the same as the distance you know here, and so on. Okay. All right, so this one then is a vertical translation, and you would just put the uh, plus one there. I'm not sure why I have that little mark there. Uh, and then finally, finally, you'll see on a graph something like this, where you have the asymptote, okay? Because x equals zero is not a valid, um, that's not part of the domain for a logarithm function. And so you have an asymptote that's clearly shifted from 0 to 4. So it's 4 units to the right. 
And how we express that is we have a, an x minus 4 in, all inside the brackets here. So this means a shift four units to the right. Okay, so that's kind of mapping transformations from your regular log x here, okay? Uh, and you want to examine the stretches first to see if there are any stretches first, and then take a look at, um, yeah, the horizontal. So uh, this one right here, okay, this example right here, if you want to take a look at this, this has um, only translations or only shifts, right? So this point right here, this blue point, has been shifted to the left and then up. See, it's gone to the left and then it's gone up. So to the left, nine units, and up two units. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. The little okay. That's a good question. What is this little three beside the log? This this is a graph of y equals log of x base three. Okay, not base ten. So it just it's it's just a, a log with a different base. So it has a slightly different set of values. It wouldn't have a base ten. It'd have base three. So it's going to be a different shape to start off with, but the point is, is that you have the original sort of base function is the same because it shares the same uh, log base, and so we can just focus on the transformations then. Good point to outline that, but if this was 4, right, this original graph might look a little different than the 3, but in essence, we're just looking at the transformations. So if you, you can't change the uh, base of a log, that's not a transformation. Notice that in our original up here, this is, there's not a variable here. Okay? So we're not going to mess around with the base of the log. Good question. Okay, so here's another one where we have a flip, right? And I guess this makes sense that the red graph would be flipped and you would have a negative A value right in the front that's what flips a graph the y value if it's positive up here when you apply a negative it becomes negative down here so that means everything flips rotates around the x-axis there so every y value that you see up top on the red has a a, a negative counterpart on the, the blue the green graph whatever that is questions so far transformations I mean I think these are pretty easy for you um, okay, I have a little note here. Um, so, um, yeah, so on a log function, right, why is there, uh, why is there an asymptote here? I think that was maybe the question that came here, um, right? Uh, log of zero equals what, right? So that would be 10 to the power of what equals zero, right? So log of zero, you can't take log of zero, and that's because 10 to the power of something would have to equal zero. And whether that exponent is positive, that makes it a really large number, or if it's negative, that makes it a really small number, but it'll never get to zero, okay? So 10 to the power of nothing gives you zero. So that's why log of zero is undefined, okay? And on that note, let's talk about this. What if, we, what if we had something like this? Negative 10. So why in, in the log world, why, are there, why is the graph not in the negative area? Well, if you think about that, if you think about this, what value, so 10 to the power of what would give us a negative 10? So what can you do to this exponent? If it's positive, it's a large positive number. If it's negative, it's a small positive number. There's nothing you can do here that changes the sign in front. It only changes whether it's large or small. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's why, that's why you can't take the log of zero and you can't take the log of any negative value. Okay. All right, do you guys have any questions for me? All right. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the textbook real quick.